Okay, hello everyone. So welcome back to the next session. So actually, I would like to apologize. Just now, I didn't even tell my name due to, like, you know, I wanted to start off and everything. So actually, I'm teacher Binoda, uh, who is handling all this IG and middle chemistry, most of it. And then, yeah, so that's supposed to be the earlier part. So I'm just introducing myself in the second part. Lah. So hope you guys can remember. And actually not important also. So we have to remember the syllabus only <laughs> rather than my name and the way I'm talking, right? Uh, and yeah, so moving on to the second session. Our second session will be on electricity and chemistry and also hydrocarbon. So these two topics will be covered in this session, which is another one hour. And as I already explained just now, maybe some would have missed it earlier. So all this coverage in the topic where we find very tedious and minute mistakes might affect your marks in these particular four topics. Where But all these tips and tricks of answering paper four, paper six, and all these acid, salt, and base, which involved um, all these color change, uh, visibility changes, measurement changes, all these observation skills and all that will be covered in the second session. I mean, second day. Uh, day two of our workshop. So for now, I'll be covering electricity and chemistry and also as well as hydrocarbon, right? So again, uh, any questions, keep it with yourself, hold it on. We can discuss it towards the end or we'll see how, all right? Okay, electrolysis. So when talking about electrolysis, what we can predict from the name itself, it is already a process where electricity is involved, and then electrolyte is involved, electrodes are involved, our ions are involved, right? So <clears throat> electrolysis, electrolysis is the process where electricity is used to break compounds down into their elements. The mixture being electrolyzed, called an electrolyte, must be liquid, either melted or dissolved to allow the ions to move. So basically, electri electricity is passed over in, over in order for the ions in the electrolyte is being uh, disassociated. So meaning the ions in the electrolyte will be disassociated or will be disturbed or will be distributed to their particular uh, way of home. So basically, they have to go to their electrodes. So the ions will either reach anode or cathode. <clears throat> so we have two ions involved in here. What are the two ions? Cations and anions. So remember cations just now in the previous bonding itself, I say it's cation means positive, anions means negative. So <clears throat> positive ions move to the cathode, the negative electron. So always remember cat to cat, CAT to CAT. So meaning CAT, cat ion, will go to CAT cathode, which is cat ion is a positive charge ion. Cathode is a negative charge electrode. So your ion will move to your electrode, which is opposite charge, right? While an ion is negative charged ion, where it will be moved to positive charge electrode. So again, negative charge is involved, sorry, Opposite charges are involved. So from one charge to another charge, we're negative to ne uh, negative. So negative an ion is positive. Uh, negative ion means it will go to positive electron. Positive ion means it would go to negative electron. Right? So why am I dispersing these ions to their places? Why am I doing this? Why am I supposed to transfer the ions to their particular way of home, which is their electrodes? Why? Because my electrolysis will be applicable in my electroplating. Electroplating is a process where I use to plate a metal with another metal, right? So alloying process, all these involve electroplating. Electroplating is example. Okay, for example, I have a steel spoon, normal steel spoon. I want to make it as a silver spoon. So normal steel spoon, not attractive. So I want to change it to silver spoon. So my longest way of electroplating my silver uh, my steel spoon is by electroplating it. 
So when I want to electroplate it, I cannot just take the spoon and then put inside the silver deep substance and then I cannot just do that. I need something which is very concrete, which can um, remain the process and remain the electroplating for a very longer time. Right? So that's when I come, I bring electrolysis into place. So what electrolysis will do? So all my silver substances are involved in this ions. So I want the ions to be really go and grab that steel spoon so that they really electroplate the steel spoon very tightly so that the steel spoon won't become again from silver spoon. Again, it will won't become to steel spoon very quickly. So I need this longer process. So I also can dip it inside. I also can do it in another way, but I'm choosing the electrolysis because it is more grasp. It is more uh, confident enough for me to identify, yes, my steel spoon will change to silver spoon if I do electroplating in a very longer way. But the contra, the con in this using um, electrolysis is using current and also longer time, right? But it is very useful way. So electrolysis is the process where I'm using current in order for me to transfer the ions. So where do ions come from? The ions come from electrolyte. What is an electrolyte? Electrolyte is someone who can be aqua solution of ionic substance or molten ionic substance. So if you can notice, electrolyte aqua solution, uh, aqua solution or molten ionic. So what is an aqua solution? My aqua solution is my solution which is mixed up with water. So my aqua solution will have these water substances. Why water substances? Then only it will become a diluted substance. So diluted substance need uh, water substance. So that water substance, we call it as aqueous, aqueous solution. So aqueous solution will have ions from water, ions from uh, the substance which I'm mixing. So usually, the usual practice, what I will do, what we will do usually for electrolysis, the electrolyte will be mixed with water. The electrolyte always will be acidified water considered. So it will be an acid, it will be water. Acid and water combined. So my ions from my acid is also there. My ions from water is also there. And electrodes. I use these electrodes where they can help me to extract the current. So where am I getting the current from? So as you can notice in the diagram over here, on your left hand side in the slide, that diagram is telling me that is how electrolysis um, apparatus setup supposed to be. So that electrolysis apparatus setup, we must need a beaker, right? We need beaker with substance inside. What kind of substance is that? It can be molten substance, it can be aqueous substance, right? So I need electrode. What is electrode? Also, as you can notice here, as you can notice here, so your electrode is here, it is connected to the current, right? It is connected to the current. My positive electrode, which is I explained just now, my anode, this is my negative electrode, my cathode. So my anode connected to the positive sides of the battery. So this battery is known as direct current. So this direct current is helping me to transfer the current, to give the current. This electrode helping me to transfer the current from this to this electrode. So, so sorry, to this electrolyte. So what this electrolyte is doing for me, it is disassociating the ions. So ions in the sense of whoever involved in this electrolyte, they use to disperse themselves. Why they are dispersing themselves? As I said just now, they have to disperse whether to go here, to go here, to find their way home, right? And then negative electrode. This is negative electrode known as cathode. This is positive electrode known as anode. And molten and aqua solution. Solution, just now here, aqua solution of ionic substance or mol molten ionic salt. Aqua solution, it can be acid and uh, water. The ions involve acid, acid ions and water's ion. So I don't need to do anything. It's already a, 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 a liquid substance already. It's already a liquid substance. But if you notice molten substance, 
Molten substance is usually, it is a metallic substance. Metallic substance in the sense of usually like sodium chloride. Okay, uh, sodium chloride. Sodium is metal, metal chloride, it's a salt. So sodium chloride is a salt. So it, it will be in solid form. So I need to um, melt it in order for me to get the electrolyte form. So after I get the electrolyte form, then will I will continue all this uh, electrolysis process. Why do I need to melt it? The ions will only perform that. It's because I need the ionic performance over there, right? And molten substance, usually metallic substance, as I told you, I need to melt it. So if you can see in the example over here, they use lead bromide. Bromine, as we all can know, metallic, non-metallic. Lead, metallic. So molten lead bromide is melted lead bromide. It's a melted substance. Okay, so that's why I'm applying heat over here. So normal electrolysis process, if I'm using only aqueous solution, I don't need this, this heating process. Only because I'm involving this molten lead bromide, molten solution, I need this heating process because molten is always melted substance. But electrolysis of other molten compounds, the pattern is the same. The pattern is the same. Okay? Electrolysis breaks down the molten ionic compound down to its elements. So meaning I need ions from lead, I need ions from bromine. So my ions involved here won't involve water substances, water ions. My ions only involve this metallic substance, melted metallic substance. So giving the metal at the cathode and non-metal at the anode. Remember this. Molten is like, you have to remember in a hard way, of course. You have to remember how this molten substance, their ions is being transferred, I mean being dispersed into the electrodes. How? By traveling to their particular way home. How do they find their home? Metal find their home in cathode. Non-metal find their home in anode. So you have to remember this way. As you can see just now, I said cat to cat, end to end. So as you can see, cat to cat, end to end. But cat to cat, cat ion to cathode, and ion to anode. But this one involving aqueous solution. But if you can notice, let's say I'm using lead bromide. Of course, my lead bromide is cat ion because PB, lead is PB2 positive. Okay? Bromide, but bromide, which is bromine, negative, halogen. They, they are taking electron like in the ionic body. No, so bromine take electron because halogen, seven valence electron take one electron. So they become negative. So this one become positive, this one becomes negative. So when lead becoming positive automatically, lead is metal is negative, sorry, positive. So positive will go to a negative electron. So that's how lead is going to the cathode. If you notice bromine, which is negative charge, negative charge will go to positive electrode. So that's why they are making their way to anode. Okay, so that's how you must remember your cathode, your cathode will attract cation. In molten substance, it will attract metal. Your anode will attract negative ion, okay, because it's positive charge electrode. And that's, that's their way home is. And in molten substance, non-metal will go to anode. Okay, and electrons will flow from negative terminal of the battery to the cathode. So if you notice, electrons will flow from here. But the truth is, electrons will, electrons from here, they will pass by here, they will go this way, and then they will go do this way. So when I switch on here, my electron will start to flow. So my electron flow will help me to disperse the ions over here. So once I start the electro electricity already, my electrons will go from here, and then from this electrolyte, it, will go, it is going here, and then passing by here, and then it's coming into here. So basically, and not to direct current, direct current to cathode. And in the liquid, the ions move to the electrode opposite charge. As I said just now, cat to cat, end to end. In the cathode, PB2 positive is accept the, um, ions accept electron. 
So, as I said just now, electron is passing through from here to here. Ma. So, that means my electron is staying here. So, when my positive ions going to cathode, my, uh, uh, my positive ions going to attract the electrons here. So, imagine cathode is a, is a, is a, is a house. Okay, cathode is a house, your relative's house. Okay, you are, sorry, you are the lead, bro, so you are the lead ions. So, what your lead ions are doing, well, as a lead ion, what you're going to do, you're going to travel to cathode. Cathode is your relative's house. Your relative's house already have certain set of rules, which is the electrons. So, when your relative's house already have the electrons, are you going to their home to follow their rules, set of rules? Yes. So that's the same thing. So your lead bromo, your lead ion is going to cathode, going to accept the electrons which are already staying in cathode. Where when I start the current, the electrons already pass from anode to cathode. Understand? So bromine at anode. <coughs> My bromine is going to go here. My bromine is going here. So red brown vapor is bubbles of. So, meaning that is the indication where my bromine is already gone to the anode. So, when my bromine is going to the anode, so imagine this relative's house, you're going to leave from here. So, the electron already leave from there, go to cathode already, another relative's house already. So, you're going to anode's house. So, as a bromine, you're going to anode's house, but the electrons are moving away already. So, what you're going to do? You're going to release the electron. So, the electron is going to be released. So, the electrons won't be kept by anode anymore. Because anode will tell, I don't want that electrons anymore already. Since you're coming, I already chase them out. So, what you're going to do from anode, when you're going to cathode, you're going to attract that electron. So, that's how electron will move. And that's how when electron is moving, your lead ion and bromine ion is moving in the electrolyte. Understand? The results. The result that the lead bromide has decomposed. So, if you notice... Let bromide decompose. Decomposition in the sense of I already separate them. I already separate them. As a compound, I already make them into elements again. So electrons carry the current through the wires, wires and electrodes. Okay, electrons carry the current through wires and electrodes. So if you notice, through wires and electrodes. But the ions carry it through the liquid. So as I said just now, ions is staying here. Only my electrons are moving through electrode and wire, but my ions are staying here. <clears throat> the graphite electrodes are inert, inert in the sense of they are unreactive. So why I must use unreactive electrodes? Because they won't react with the ion electron, whichever I'm using. So they will be a neutral person. Okay. So they carry, they carry the current into the liquid, but remain unchanged. So remember, imagine if let's say, there, I'm using a reactive metal, something like magnesium, zinc, and all the very reactive metal. So, whenever I'm using the reactive metal, they react themselves. So, they take it very personally there. So, they react themselves when the current is passing by. Oh, the current is coming. The current is trying to tell me something. So, let me react with the electrolyte. So, but in electrolysis, I don't want that to happen. Because when that is happening, they will uh, remove all their purities to the other side. So, I don't want to use a reactive metal. So, that's why I'm always using unreactive metal which is inert so that they won't react with the electrolyte. So, that they will be calm, stable, they'll be a neutral person. So, that the process which I want it to happen, it will happen smooth. Right? So, the rules for the electrolysis of a solution. At the cathode, either a metal or hydrogen form. Okay? At cathode, which is the negative charge electron, so electrode, either a metal or hydrogen. So how do I know whether metal or hydrogen? If you can notice, you have to remember this order of reactivity again, reactivity series. I'm sure this we have learned in grade 8, grade 9, and also in grade 10. Right? So this reactivity series will tell you whether my metal must go first, my hydrogen must go first. Okay? So here, let's say reactive metal is reacting, that means my metal must go first or hydrogen because my hydrogen, right? <laughs> whoever, sorry, whoever is below in the, whoever very at the bottom or below in the reactivity series, they will be discharged. 
right? And um, yeah, but if the metal is less reactive than hydrogen, the metal form. So you always have to remember whoever below here, they will be dis discharged. Whoever on top here, they will make hydrogen to be discharged. Okay. It, if it is a concentrated solution of a halide, halide is what? Halide is basically a substance which contains halogen, halide. So when halide is there, the rules is different. So when halide is there, your halogen will be dispersed. Your halogen will be disassociated. And other than that, uh, hydrogen or any other hydroxide won't be disassociated, but your halogen will disassociate it. So whichever uh, halogen element inside your electrolyte, they will go first. They will sacrifice themselves. It's okay. I will go first. So by right, another unreactive element must go, but then your halogen is going. Okay, Only for halogen, this set of rules, rules is applicable. But if the halide solution is dilute, there's no halide. Oxygen will be formed. Concentrated means the halogen concentration is very high. They're very strong. So they're very strong in, uh, in that electrolyte already. Okay, so they will go. It's okay, they're very firm, they go. But then in diluted solution, meaning the solution already diluted with water, so the halide substance, which is the halogen substance will be very less. So the halogen substance will be very weak. So they don't want to sacrifice themselves. So they themselves weak, they don't want to, no, they don't want to sacrifice themselves and then move away from there. So they want to uh, oxygen to go. It's okay, oxygen, you go because you are widely formed, so you go. Okay, something like that. Okay, this is a, these are the basic principles where molten electrolyte and uh, aqueous electrolyte when being used, as you can see, we have cathode anode, cathode anode. Each uh, application is different. Molten electrolyte means, as I said just now, molten electrolyte is what? One metal and one non-metal. Metallic substance, metal and non-metal combined. So molten electrolyte, is the metallic substance where it is melted, right? At cathode, metal will be released because uh, generally by now, metal will be the positive ion. So positive ion is released at the cathode. Negative ion released at anode. And aqua solution, aqua solution, as I said just now, acidified water. So meaning, got water, got hydroxide. Hydroxide in the sense of OH ion. OH ion, where, where am I getting it from? I'm getting it from water okay so at cathode if echo solution higher in reactivity than h plus sorry h positive and then lower in reactivity than h positive so if let's say i'm using in aqueous electrolyte i'm using two types of substances one substance higher than h h positive one substance lower than h positive if let's say the substance uh, one substance is i'm using higher than h positive H positive will be formed. I'm oh, sorry. Hydrogen ion will be formed. Why? As I said just now, in the reactivity series, whoever on top, they will make hydrogen to be discharged. So the same thing goes here. If let's say my another substance is higher than H positive, H positive is going to be discharged. Next, lower in reactivity. That means if let's say the substances I'm using involve hydrogen and copper. So who will be discharged? Metal formed, meaning copper metal will be discharged. So whoever below hydrogen, they will be discharged. So meaning here, hydrogen and carbon are the setting point where they will manage, they will arrange or they will decide whether people on top of them or people bottom of them going to discharge, discharge at particular electrode. So hydrogen will tell you whether, okay, if you're higher than me, it's okay, let me go. If you are lower than me, of course, you must go. Hydrogen is like a setting point. So hydrogen will tell, higher than them, they will tell, okay, it's okay, I will go. So you are my superior like that. But then if lower than them, hydrogen will tell, hey, you are below them, uh, below me, so you must go. So that's how the dispersion of ion will be identified when it is, it, it is involving hydrogen and other metal substance. Okay? <laughs> While aqueous electron at the anode, if let's say halide present, halide means halogen substance. Halogen substance, if let's say it's a concentrated solution, halogen will be formed. 
diluted solution, oxygen will be formed. If let's say halide is not present, of course, oxygen gas will be formed. Okay, oxygen gas will be released at anode. These are the reactivity series. The reactivity series won't be provided in the exam paper. Okay, and then <clears throat> electrolyte. If let's say, for example, molten lead bromide. Remember, just now we use molten lead bromide over here. Molten lead bromide, cathode, my lead is releasing, anode, bromine is releasing. Concentrated hydrochloric acid, as I said just now, hydrogen and chlorine. Chlorine is halide solution. Okay, since it's involving chlorine, then it is an halide solution. Since it's concentrated at anode, my chlorine is being released. Concentrated aqueous sodium chloride, sodium chloride, again, chlorine, halogen. Again, I'm having a halide solution over here, but this is aqueous. Okay, hydrogen and chlorine again. So, chlorine is being discharged. Understand, by right, if let's say my chlorine is not involved over here, it is either oxygen or the metal must be discharged. But since my chlorine is appearing over here, my chlorine is sacrificing themselves, they they allowing themselves to be discharged at the electron. Right? Okay. Ions are free to move. Remember this Aldrich concept. Aldrich will tell us oxygen oxidation is losing electron. Reduction is gaining electron. So why am I explaining this? Because electrolysis is closely related with redox reaction. So redox reaction is a combination where oxidation and redox reaction, redox, oxidation and reduction reaction happening together in the same uh, experiment. Okay, where one side electrons is being lost and then one side electron is being gained. So where a process where a electron is being donated and also Take them, accept it, so that reaction is supposed to be a uh, redox reaction, where oxidation and reduction take place. Right. So first in lead bromide, let, just now I said, just now we saw this example. So I already tell you how the electron will flow and also how the ions will be discharged. But what is the clear process now? Ions will move. Once I start the current, electrons already move to, from anode to cathode. And then ions will start to move. So positive lead ion will go to cathode. So they will find their way home to their opposite charged place. Right? The, the free moving ions are there. At cathode, these are the half equation. So remember in examination, they are asking, what is the half equation? This is supposed to be the half equation. Okay. And the reason behind this half equation, why am I having this electron over here, positive electron, but why here I'm having the electron here? So as you can see the difference, this is before arrow, I already write my electron. This is after the arrow only I'm writing the electron. So the meaning behind this, at cathode, as I told you, when you're going to a place where electrons are safe, so electrons are staying. At cathode, electrons are staying. So from anode, all electrons already being chased to cathode. So when you are going to your cathode's house as a lead person, as a lead, lead two positive, you are going to cathode. You go there, you find the electrons. So as I said just now, if there are a set of rules at your cathode house, you have to follow that. Cathode is a relative house, right? So electrons are the set of rules over there. So when you go there, you start accepting them. So the reason behind why my electron is before the arrow is I am accepting the electron over here. So since I am accepting the electron over here, once I accept, I become neutral because already I was an ion with PB2 positive. When I am gaining another two electron, I am become neutral. I am become normal element. So I am become a very neutral person. So that's why before I become a neutral person, I'm accepting the electrons whoever stayed in the cathode house just now. Okay, that is the reason behind why my electron is before the arrow. If you come to anode, if, as you can see, electron is after the arrow. So why after the arrow? Anode, what anode, anodes are doing? They are releasing the electron to the cathode house. I don't want you to chase. So my bromine is coming. I don't want you to be here. You just go away from here. Go to cathode's place. 
So bromine is going. Bromine couldn't find any electron over there. So bromine is releasing electron. So that's why, as you can see here, here I am accepting the electron. Here I am releasing the electron. That's why my electron here in my half equation it is after the arrow. So that's the reason why in your cathode, since cathode is a place where electrons are staying, your half equation must have this way. Before your arrow, you must already write written your electron. In anode, your electrons already being chased away, already being uh, transferred to cathode. So there's no electrons in your anode. So what is happening over here? Bromine is releasing electron. Okay, that's why I am becoming a bromine negative ion over here because electrons already be removed. Right? So remember already, so this will tell you. Okay, let's say question is asking you. At um, cathode, is it a reduction process or oxidation process? So, of course, cathode reduction process is going on. Why? Reduction is gaining of electron. As you can see, in cathode, I'm gaining electron over here. So, reduction happening at cathode. So, oxidation, where, where which, which electron oxidation is happening? So, you automatically must remember oxidation is losing electron. Who is losing electron? Anode. Because anode is chasing away the electron. So, anode is losing electron. So, oxidation is taking place at anode. Understand? <clears throat> we have two forms. Concentrated solution and diluted solution. What is the difference? Concentrated, of course, they are more concentrated with high amount of particles. The amount of particles are more compared to diluted. Diluted, they are already very, very boring already. So, they are particles very low number. But concentrated, they are still very strong. The number of particles is still high. Right? So, the performance of concentrated is always will be depends on the concentration level. So, if you notice, solution contains sodium ion, chlorine ion from, so, from salt. So, what salt does sodium and chloride ions are presented? which is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride compound will have sodium and chlorine ion. So, and H positive OH. Why am I saying H positive and OH from water? Because I didn't mention this is molten. So, this must be aqueous. So, aqueous must have water substance. When I'm having water substance, I will have hydroxide and hydrogen ion. Re always remember when I'm using aqueous solution, OH minus and H positive is my two ions in my water. While in acid or salt which I'm using, the ions depends on the metal and non-metal which I'm using. If let's say I'm using sodium chloride, sodium ion and chloride ion. If let's say I'm using hydrochloric acid, hydrogen ion and chlorine ion. Okay, chloride ion. If let's say I'm using H2SO4, so I have what ion and what ion? Hydrogen and sulfide ion. Okay, hydrogen is positive, sulfide ion is negative. So I have hydrogen sulfide. If let's say sulfuric acid, I have these two. If let's say water, I have hydrogen and hydroxide, which is set. Okay, that's the norm. So it, it, it is the it is just there. H positive ions accept electrons. So since hydrogen is less reactive than sodium, hydrogen is being released. As I said just now. Whoever superior than hydrogen, hydrogen will sacrifice themselves. I will go first. So hydrogen is going off first. So when hydrogen is going off, how it will show? I'm showing, I'm coming. How am I showing? So I will bubble off. So there will be bubble for me, for the hydrogen to show the, um, okay, if bubbling means I'm coming. Just remember something like that. Okay. So at not who will be discharged? Chlorine. Why chlorine? As I said just now, halide solution. By right, who supposed to be? Metal. But then, here, no. Here, since metal and chlorine is involved, as I said just now, if halide solution means, chlorine must be removed. Okay? And, um, at the anode, chlorine is removed. And as you can see, anode releasing electron. So, after the arrow, the electron is here. If you notice, in cathode, accepting electron, so before the arrow itself, my electron is already shipped. So when hydrogen and chlorine bubble off, sodium, uh, sodium and hydroxide ion are behind. 
Okay, so a solution of sodium hydroxide is formed. So my product from this electrolysis of sodium chloride and water substance. What is my end product? Which and solution, right? Solution is a very um thin concentration. Okay, not to say very concentrated as concentrated solution just now. The same ion are present as before. Same ions because same ions my I'm using both also I'm using sodium chloride just that it's concentrated or not that's the difference. So but now the proportion of sodium and chlorine ion is lower because it's diluted. I already mix with water already so it's very soft soft already. Okay, since this is dilute solution, the result will be different. So at cathode hydrogen means of so hydrogen is being released. Okay, and at anode. OH is being released since not many chlorine ion is present. So as I said just now, it's very diluted. Just now concentrated. Concentrated means chlorine is very effective. So chlorine will say, it's okay, I go. I go and jagger all of you. But then in diluted, chlorine itself very weak already. So chlorine will be discharged, but hydroxide ion is being discharged. So it's either at anode, OH or chlorine must be removed. Just now in concentrated, chlorine removed. But then now, in diluted, since chlorine atoms are very, chlorine ions are very low in number, so hydroxide is being released. Understand? Okay, sample of questions. State the meaning of the term electrolyte. So electrolyte, it is an ionic compound. Remember the keyword, it must be an ionic compound. Then only you can use it as an electrolyte so that the ion will be disassociated. If you just mention compound, no marks. But the ionic compound can be in molten or aqueous solution and must conduct electricity. The, in the electricity must be there. Okay, next. So complete the table below by observation. So name of, if aqueous copper sulfate, the name of the product will be oxygen because copper is less reactive. And observation, if a negative electrode, cathode, pink or brown solid and copper will be released. Next, concentrated aqueous sodium bromide. Concentrated. So remember, sodium bromide is there. So who's supposed to be involved in the production of anode? Bromine must be involved because halide solution, ma, concentrated. Ma, and more halogen substance will be there. So bromine in bromine bromine substance will be released. Okay. So how about the half equation? So they are asking for the half equation. So hydrogen is produ produced at the negative electrode, which is cathode, during the electrolysis of concentrated aqueous concentrated aqueous sodium sodium bromide. So concentrated aqueous sodium bromide concentrated me. Of course, bromine will be released here. And what is the half equation? And write the ionic half equation for this reaction. This reaction. Okay, because as you can see, hydrogen is being released here. So, state two reasons why carbon graphite is suitable. As I said just now, inert and good conductor of heat and electricity. So, it must be someone who is unreactive, but they can, they can conduct electricity and heat. This question... They have given the example of how the experiment is done and then chloride ions are being discharged at the anode. So complete the ionic half equation. So chlorine is discharged means and discharge at where? Anode. So your electron is supposed to be after the arrow. Okay. And whether oxidation or reduction takes place. So if they are asking A, 1 and 2, Teacher, they didn't even tell the oxidation reduction at cathode or anode. Obviously, it's anode because your A itself already mentioned anode. So, your 1 and 2, A sub question 1, A sub question 2 is involved to whatever information they have given here at A. So, see whether, state whether the oxidation reduction, of course, they're talking about anode. So, anode always lose oxygen. So, oxidation is take place over here. Okay? And then, followed by what is seen at cathode? Colorless gas. Why seen at cathode colorless gas? Because uh, gas is released. Okay? Concentrated hydrochloric acid and 
and cathode oxygen gas is being released. Okay. Molten potassium chloride undergo electrolysis. Molten potassium chloride. Potassium is matter, chloride is non matter. State what is meant by the term electrolysis. Electrolysis again breakdown of ionic compound. Just now they asked what is an electrolyte. Electrolyte in the sense of it is an ionic compound. But electrolysis is to break that ionic compound. So breaking down ionic compound in a molten or aqueous solution by the passage of electricity. So breaking down the ionic compound by passing through electricity. And then at anode who will be discharged because we are talking about molten potassium chloride. And then at cathode, of course, my potassium must be released. Why? Because potassium is metal. And chlorine is non-metal and as well as chlorine is halogen particle, halogen substance. Okay, because it's halide. I guess so there, there won't be much time for me to show. This is basically a video link to show how electrolysis in an animation way so that you guys can pictureize a bit how the electrolysis process will go on. But then for now, I guess so I couldn't play it because of the time constraint. But never mind, if let's say um, due towards the end, if we have time, then we will play this video and see how the process of uh, electrolysis will be done in an animation way. Lah.